the DOJ indictment I, of, that's of the this joke. man. The it's DOJ indictment actually it says that he also he just wanted down, to though? tie her up to go to Everybody sleep. takes things down. So there no, they see, Look at you. You are getting too, too emotional about this. You should be enjoying the speech. Just because I'm at a higher pitch than you doesn't mean I'm not more emotional. <laughs> you it's you just should, estrogen. <laughs> Jesse, you should just I enjoy it. Jesse. It's not enjoyable to spread disinformation. Ah, yes. Uh, resident comedian, if you could believe it, Greg Gutfeld called his uh, female Democratic colleague, Jessica Tarloff, too emotional as she was uh, expressing her concern about disinformation that's been spreading following the vicious attack on Paul Pelosi in his own home. A uh, man, as we've uh, reported, broke into his home and then attacked him with a hammer, hit him in the head. He had to have uh, surgery as a result. And there's been all sorts of crazy conspiracy theories, even though uh, we have details about the perpetrator, including how his attack was politically motivated. Now, uh, later, Gutfeld himself gets pretty emotional and has a bit of a meltdown. Which makes him a huge hypocrite for judging a female colleague for being passionate in making her argument. But before we get to all of that, let's give you a little more context, okay? Let's talk through some of the uh, initial elements of this spat. Now, Jessica Tarloff is a guest uh, host on The Five. And uh, sh the representative of the left, obviously very broadly speaking here uh, on the panel. Now, Tarloff uh, talked pretty rationally about the attack on Paul Pelosi and uh, the exchange uh, between Hillary Clinton and Elon Musk, which we covered on the show as well. In that exchange on Twitter, Elon Musk had uh, tweeted out a fake news conspiracy about Paul Pelosi having some sort of like male guy he's having sex with. It's just completely unfounded nonsense. He later took down the tweet, uh, but that's what sparked some of this debate. So let's take a look at the next clip. When Elon Musk weighed in on the conspiracy theories about DePapi, DePap, whoever, the, the guy who broke into Paul Pelosi and Nancy Pelosi's house, um, had zip ties with him, um, beat him in the head with a hammer, right? Mm -hmm. And Elon Musk replied, I believe, to a Hillary Clinton tweet about this, um, promoting complete lies about what had happened. So did Hillary. And, that was the joke. That was his joke. He was trolling no, no, he, her. He, no, he, he was trolling her because she she came out with her own conspiracy that this was obviously so, right wing, uh, a right wing. Uh, well, the guy conspiracy. Excuse me. So Emma, this has been an incredibly frustrating thing to see played out in the media where you know you have, first of all, I mean, he was clear about what he wanted to do, right? De Pape was very clear about how he wanted to break Nancy Pelosi's kneecaps if she lied to him so that she could be you know, wheelchaired into the Capitol building so other democratic politicians know what will happen to them. If they lie as well, like it was clearly politically motivated, but Republicans don't want to take any ownership of that, even though they engage in all sorts of rhetoric that incites violence in a country that's full of people who don't have who have mental health issues, don't have access to the health care they need to deal with said mental health issues. I mean, they know what they're doing. Of course, and I mean, you know. <laughs> The idea that Hillary Clinton tweeted out a conspiracy, there's no conspiracy here. Yeah. It's well documented what this guy was trafficking in, which was QAnon, Pizzagate conspiracies. He was writing about hollow hoax and Holocaust denial, general right wing racist content, and was also an anti vax conspiracy theorist as well. It fits all of the right wing ideology to a T. But, you know, Sam and, and my colleagues at the Majority Report brought this up on the show today um, how right after January 6th, there were people immediately, the day of, the day of saying, well, it was Antifa. Right. And you just see that as long as they have an excuse right off the bat, they're still saying, you know, nearly two years later, that it was Antifa, that it was a false flag on January 6th, because they can't actually take ownership of their own rhetoric. They want to engage in it, they want to use it to an extent for electoral and financial gain if you're in the media, for example. But when the chickens come home to roost and people start to act on this explosive and violent rhetoric, well, then they can't own it and they have to pretend that it's fake. 
because there's no way for them to actually continue to behave in the way that they have um, and, and rationalize it there. And yeah, I mean, Jessica Tarloff, she's been on that program for a while. She is the resident punching bag for the left. But, you know, Gutfeld and Jesse Waters are the two men that are on that uh, show, The Five, with those three other women. And it does not get more like drippingly misogynistic just in the aura of who they are than those two. I mean, Jesse Waters. He talked about how you know he met his current wife who was an intern by taking the air out of her tires so that she could not leave the Fox News facility so that they could uh, have a meet cute. That's like his oh. characterization of that. I would, you know, if a guy who was trying to date me who was older and my superior potentially took the air out of my tires in the parking garage, I would say, okay, I'm about to get murdered. Um, but oh, they ended up happily married, he left his wife for her, how lovely. So Gutfeld is also like in that vein of just they want to cosplay mad men and act however they want to women and and uh, be hypocritical about it, be emotional, but she's the one who's emotional. And honestly, Jessica Tarloff, like, leave that place. I mean, there's no value for you to be there and be the resident liberal who just gets attacked on a daily basis. I know you're probably making a lot of money, but go somewhere else because this is not adding value to society. Well, the conversation further devolved when uh, my, my favorite misogynistic statement was made by Greg Gutfeld. And I say my favorite because I've experienced it so often myself. So let's watch that part of the interaction and then we'll go to Gutfeld and his little meltdown. The guy said, and the DOJ report came out today, right, that he wanted to come there to capture Nancy Pelosi, to make her repent for all of the lies of the Democratic Party, and he was going to beat her kneecaps in well, actually, until she did so, so that she would have to be wheeled into Congress. Yes, to actually, show what happened. But actually, so Elon Musk is the CEO of that company. Hillary Clinton, you could say whatever you want about he was, her. He wasn't it has he was nothing responding to, do with to Hillary this. Clinton. He, he was, was trolling her. He was spreading well, lies. Actually, he so was, was she. The DOJ indictment I, of, that's of the this joke. man. The it's DOJ indictment actually it says that he also he just wanted to tie her up to go to Everybody sleep. takes things down. So there no, they Look at you. You are getting too, too emotional about this. You should be enjoying the speech. Just because I'm at a higher pitch than you doesn't mean I'm not more emotional. It's just estrogen. Jesse, I have a Enjoy it. Jesse. It's not enjoyable to spread disinformation. <laughs> You're, you're getting too emotional about this. You should enjoy conspiracy theories that defame someone who is just victimized in a vicious attack with a freaking hammer in his own home. A I politically mean, motivated attack. But don't get emotional, don't get emotional. Even though yeah. we're about to show you how emotional Greg Gutfeld gets. But Emma, go ahead. No, I just like, I and I, thank you, Jimmy Dore and the people on <laughs> the left who mocked AOC for fearing for her life on January 6th and thinking that she was going to get raped. I mean, they what if she got raped, if she was assaulted by one of those January 6ers, you know what they'd say immediately? She's making it up, she was asking for it. They're doing that right now <laughs> with Paul Pelosi, let alone Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who's the avatar for everything they hate about the left and the Democratic Party. And it just, I mean, they'll immediately go to lies and spreading disinformation. The I, and, and, and what I love too about these like men in the Republican Party who say that the left is filled with soy boys and beta males is that they are sucking at, uh, at the teat, sorry mm -hmm, for the imagery. Mm -hmm of Elon Musk and they just think, oh man, this guy who's like basically a 12 year old 4chan troll boy who's replying with fake news to Hillary Clinton. Like, oh, he totally owned her man, like he's so sick. He's just like the maximum troll that we could ever ask for. Like, oh, this billionaire, he's like, he's the man. They have no like identity outside of worshiping Dude. billionaires. Go, go lick that boot a little bit more, Greg Gutfeld, and then we'll talk about who's over emotional. Yeah, it's, dude, it, I, I gotta say, the funniest <laughs> development with the right wing is how they blame the lack of masculinity among men today on feminists. When like their own behavior and actions are so pathetic and so weak. That it's like, mm, I don't know, man, is it really the feminists who destroyed masculinity? Or is it you who's like constantly on your knees filleting like online trolls and billionaires like Elon Musk and Donald Trump? Like, let's just let's just keep it real. And oh, finally, yeah. 
let's let's talk about getting emotional because Greg Gutfeld on that same day got emotional about the very same issue that they were discussing earlier with Tarloff. So let's take a look at that. Yes. <laughs> this is part of January 1st. It's MAGA extremists behind this because they always attract illegal alien nudists who live in school buses who think they're Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> Republican candidates have spent more than 116 million on ads that mention Speaker Pelosi by name in this cycle. If this is about the issues, why don't you make it about the issues? Why not depersonalize it? In this moment, we are eight days out. Don't you think this needs to change? Why not pull some of these ads? Why not just delete your tweet? Why not delete your brain? Oh, you should stop the ads just eight days out. How? What a coincidence that you would use this for that suggestion. Do these people think before they say anything? Margaret, when will CBS depersonalize their content? Maybe start with young Sheldon. <laughs> I don't know, it must be that time of the month for Greg Gutfeld. Mm. I mean, he should smile more. He's, I mean, he sounds hysterical, right? It's time mm -hmm. for him, sweetie, take a nap, right? You just let, let, let the women kind of handle this from here on out because it seems like you might be experiencing some hormonal imbalances. Yeah, um, yeah I think I the mean, pressures of the job is just too much for Greg Gutfeld. Maybe he should step aside and allow a woman to take over, you know? I agree. Um, I mean, uh, that he should have a sad face emoji instead of the exclamation point at the end of his at the end of his program. When a woman is emotional, she's hysterical. When a man is emotional, he's passionate. That's kind mm -hmm. of how it goes, right? And um, emotion is strength. People like Greg Gutfeld and right wingers want you to numb yourself to like a visceral reaction that you might have to. An 82 year old man getting assaulted <laughs> with a hammer uh, in his home. That's wrong. <laughs> That's horrible. And uh, like makes me just, if you have any ounce of humanity, it, it makes you sad. And I'm no fan of Pelosi, but I, I don't want her husband getting assaulted with a hammer. They want you to disconnect that part of yourself your humanity from your political ideology. Cuz that's the only way that right wingers can win. 